I guess now it's gonna stop because they're making fun of it. That's good. <laughs> Welcome back to the Monday Mail Call. I'm your host, the Duck Man. <laughs> There this is. The pretty, pretty princess. She is indeed. Babe McQueen. Babe McQueen. B. Babe. No. Babe McQueen. Not like the pig. I kind of like the pig. Kind of like a pig? Like Only when there's a lot of chicken wings. <laughs> well, we're back today to open up mail, and we're sorry we skipped a week on you. Not because we didn't have mail, but rather because so much stuff came up in my life. And we're going to share a little bit of that story in this video today. Because everybody's going to be curious, and they're going to want to know, how did Duck Man save a life? Yeah. That's a good story. You're going to have to actually stay tuned for that one. Nice and popcorn. Oh, yeah, something like that. Not if you have bad teeth, though, but that's, <laughs> that's part of the story. Too we'll, soon. We'll get in on that one. <laughs> Well, we got some stuff here today that we're going to open on up. Uh, looks like it's going to be all Volkswagen related stuff, which is really exciting because we have a chromed engine over here that's going to completely, is it even in the frame? Let's see. Yeah, you can barely see. It's right there in the corner table. Beautiful chrome engine that is going to just obliterate itself. It's going to go thermonuclear. It's it's just going to just it's going to melt down. That so chrome. Bad, you can just, smell it. Yeah, I already smell it. You smell it? I smell it. All that chrome. I mean, you can hear it right now. It sounds like a jet engine because it's burning up. Give it a second. <laughs> this is the flight path they're on today. <laughs> you know, the irony of it is I was at David's house last night. Dave lives up on Nine Mile Road, north of Nine Mile Road, rather, up 29, where it's quiet. And we're trying to record video, and it was ambulance, fire engine, fire engine, EMT, police car. <laughs> it's just like so much for quiet. <laughs> That's all the crap I get here because there's a fire and rescue right over here in the equal distance that there's one in the opposite direction. So it's like, no matter what, I'm right in the middle of, of it all. And of course, right here in this neighborhood, you never know what the hell's going to go on. <laughs> stuff just happens. It's all kinds of stuff happens. Well, we're going to open up some prezzies that came in the mail. It looks like stuff that we might have ordered from ourselves. I don't think we actually got any regular gifts this week. However, some are expected. Some are expected, so we'll see that in the next coming weeks. And uh, we're going to open them up together. One of which is coming from uh, my boyfriend Jody up in Canada. Jody? Yeah. He told me for whatever reason he couldn't address it to me. It wouldn't accept like my name because of the billing information or something. Mm. So it'll be addressed to him at my mailbox. So he says that way you'll know who it's from. So, <laughs> so it's something he says it's, it's uh, I'm not giving away too many secrets. It's something I'm going to lie. Okay. It could be many things. Why would you send me something that I don't like? It could be funny. Because it's weird. I think I've liked everything that everybody ever gave me except Biddy. Poor Biddy. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and open up some prezies. Let's open one of yours. Want to do that one? Sure. A little one. A little one. I'm not even for certain what's in it. Because this was stuff I had ordered some time ago. Ignition oh, and key? That's exactly what it is. It's, now I know what's in the other box too. It's the ignition and key for Rob Super Beetle, the one that I've been doing all that electrical work on. The ignition was busted out of it and he wanted to have a proper, <laughs> wanted to have a proper ignition lock. Even though we're not gonna use it for the electrics, we are gonna use it to lock the column. So this is gonna go back in that car. So we needed a new key. The other one that was there was just uh, missing parts to it. And I'll demonstrate how to replace one of these in its own video. Yeah, that's actually going to be rather interesting. But I've done these before, and they're not hard, but they're not meant to come apart. They're meant to be inserted. They lock into place because all the little things <laughs> splay out on them. <laughs> all the little things splay out on them when you push it in, and it's captive. So you have to actually find where the little button is. In fact, there it is. And you have to drill a hole from the outside to push that in. And then it's, it's, well, it's supposed to be hard. It's a security item. You know, it's not supposed to be easy. It's not easy to feed. But that's why we got one to replace that. And it was cheaper than having a locksmith work on it. I think that was like $15 or something. If I put a locksmith in there, it'd probably be 30, 40 bucks easy just to start. Yep, so that's why we got that. Well, Biddy, go away! Oh, 
Okay, um, well, guess what? Licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all of our social media links. You can find B's stuff up there. You can find my stuff up there. You can find Biddy's stuff up there. Boomer and any one of the other cockadoodle doodles. You can also find Earl from Classic Car Creations. You can find Ranchero 302Me. Hey, David, we shot a video last night. I don't know if it's coming out before this one, but you guys can expect that as part of one of my Volkswagen cruises. I decided just to put it in. Recorded my whole day. Everything from when I left the house in the morning until, until I was on the way home. A day in the yeah. life of Duckman. A day in the life of the Duckman. <laughs> we'll be back right after the intro. And welcome back. We've got more junk to open up here. This is for me. This is also what we opened already. What have you got? What is it? It's more spark plug. plug. <laughs> more spark plug wires. And why do we get more spark spark plug wires? <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. I wasn't making fun of you. <laughs> well, we got more spark plug wires. Spark plug wires. Spark and spark and organ. Spark my fork and flark and organ. We got more. Beauty, beauty, beauty. So we got more sport. <laughs> I'm not gonna edit that out. I normally save that for bloopers, but it's too good to uh -oh. not to leave it in. Fuck me, brother. Okay. If you want to. So we got more spark plugs, spark wires. Plug wires. Because we needed one more long one. Need a long one. I need a long one, boys. I broke it already. Damn it. <laughs> no, I just wanted to see if it disassembled. Because what we're doing is we're making a custom spark plug wire for the coil, so that way we can mount the coil remotely rather than drilling holes in the beautiful chrome. And who wants to do that? The engine looks so nice. And then we have spares. And then you're gonna have some spares for the rest of them. So if you accidentally burn one or put a nick in it for some reason, and you, you mess something up, or or someone needs one. Add like they'll a text section. They'll be blue. <laughs> yeah, they'll hey, remember. Is Biddy chasing you again? No, Biddy's attacking my shoe that I threw at Biddy a little bit ago. <laughs> Jumping all over it. <laughs> Alright, well, there's your sport plug wars. Sport plug. Sport plug wars. Sport plug Well, before we carry on about anything else, this week, last Sunday in particular, when we were going to record our mail call Monday, this is the reason why I put it off for a week. I got a, a phone call from a friend of mine, he wasn't doing in too good a shape, and I knew he had a problem, and the problem started out as much as a week before, but it had gotten to the point, left untreated, that it was life-threatening. His face had swollen up, and I'll put a picture up here on the screen because he allowed me to do that. Um, his jaw was just incredibly sized on one side, and the picture that you see actually is not as worse as it had gotten. It got worse over the course of a couple of days. He was very tall, he was... Yeah, he sounded worse than the Godfather. Like Godfather with a mouthful of, of marbles and cotton, and he was he was a mess. He was in some really really bad shape. He needed help, um, probably even the night before, because he was sleeping alone while his face was swelling into his windpipe and it was constricting him and he couldn't breathe. And he told me that he had a friend that was supposed to be watching him the night before, not to worry about him. So I felt okay about it, you know, that he was going to be in some good shape and he's taken care of. Well, the next day, not only had he worsened, but all of his friends had abandoned him. Nobody was there for him. Every single person that said they were going to do something disappeared, stopped responding to their phone calls, wouldn't answer to texts. They left the poor guy out hanging to dry, and he didn't want to bother me. He actually felt like he was a bother. And in the condition that he was in, you're not bothering me, dude. You know, let me know what's up. Well, he did the next day. He survived through the night. I went to go see him, and uh, he was even bigger than he had been in the photo. And he was just not feeling well at all, running a fever, and he was in some bad shape. Well, on Easter Sunday it was, I'm trying to call for an emergency dentist someplace to see if we can get this abscess treated, because we believe that's all it was at the time, which is a simple abscess. He had cancer some years before, and he irradiated his teeth, so it killed all the pulp inside of him. So it's the same as having a root canal. Your teeth only last, you know, about 10 years after that, and they're probably going to have to extract what remains of the tooth. And in this case, they were all killed by radiation. So his teeth ended up becoming brittle, falling apart, and an infection settled down inside of one of them. So he uh, 
he needed help. So I'm on the phone trying to find dentists, and every single dentist that I tried to call, and you know, I'm gonna say their name because I think they completely suck, and I ordinarily wouldn't, and I'm probably gonna be threatened for libel, but Aspen Dental fucking sucks. And I'm gonna say that particularly about the one branch locally here in town, the one in Milton Pace. Now, I don't know if the dentist is any good. We never got to see the dentist. I called for an appointment. They set me up for an appointment. Everything's fine, emergency, 48 hours. That's good enough, I suppose. But for 48 hours, that means I had to babysit Rob. I had to make sure that he had something to eat, you know, mush. I was feeding him insured drinks, boost energy stuff, you know, just stuff to keep him sustained in the time that we're waiting for this appointment. Well, the day of the appointment, I get a text message that says, you know, we're excited to see you. Please show up 15 minutes early. It was at 9 a.m. So I showed up at 8.30. When I walk in there and we say who we are, that's when the help says, your appointment has been canceled. Who cancels an emergency appointment? They're like, oh, we canceled it the day before. So you canceled the emergency appointment the day before, didn't call me to notify me, and here's the icing on the cake. They told me they texted me. Talk about the most passive way to get out of something. That's what kids say. Oh, I texted you that. You know, I, I te I'm sure you've heard it before. We've all heard it before. I texted you that. Yeah, sure you did. And then, and then they, they, they think that I'm completely incompetent to technology and how it works. And they're like, well, we can show you here where we did. Oh, yeah. And I, I can show you where the check's in the mail for the bill, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I put it in the mail. Sure. And I promise not to come in your mouth, right? It's just, I, I can't believe that we were treated that way. Here he is, he's in the office. His, his face is beyond what the photos were. The Cabrera talk. And now he's completely upset. He knows he's, he's, as you said earlier, knocking on death's door. He needs to be treated right away. We just got canceled on this appointment. They tried to rebook us for two hours later, which I was okay with. But then they said, this is where they, <laughs> where they really screwed up. It's for an exam only. So we're gonna wait two more hours to have an exam, only for him to be sent back home. And then we're gonna schedule you for an appointment two weeks out to treat you. So he's got to wait another two weeks in that condition where he certainly might not make it. Well, he had visited his uh, general practitioner at the time who gave him some pain pills and some antibiotics to try to help him with what was going on, but a GP can't treat that either. We went to the emergency room. The emergency room said, go find a dentist. So we tried contacting other dentists. Every dentist said two weeks, and I suppose that's the standard when it comes to dentals. Uh, I. I don't have a whole lot of experience calling around a dental office, especially not for emergencies, because I, I don't have a whole lot of problems. I mean, you know, <laughs> as long as that's going to last. But two weeks. Everybody told him two weeks. So he went to the ER. The ER told him go find a dentist. He visited a dentist two weeks out. I took him to an urgent care clinic that's not too far from home. And we pushed our way in there because he knew somebody. Let's get him looked at. Just please look at him and tell us what we need to do next. They looked at him and they said, well, he needs uh, <laughs> a really heavy dosage of antibiotics. Not the oral stuff. You need to actually put a bag in him, hook him up, and get him loaded up with this stuff. So let's do it. We don't do that at this facility. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where does it take place? Where can this happen? Visit the other urgent care clinic that's on the other side of town. Got him in the car, we drove across town, we went in there, he's filling out the paperwork, one of the nurses comes on out, starts talking to Rob, looks at his face and says, you need to find a dentist. <laughs> you need to find a dentist. He says, two weeks, and he's trying to mumble and I had to speak up. I said, we've been trying to find dentists for several days. They cancel our appointment, so they tell us two weeks. We've been to the ER. The ER said find a dentist. He's been to his doctor. His doctor said to find a dentist. There's no dentist going to treat him. We need a proper doctor to look at this thing. This is more severe than just a tooth infection. This is not just an abscess anymore. This is a problem. Meanwhile, he had a big neck like a bullfrog. The whole side of his head was swelling. It's starting to come out the other side now, too. I mean, he looked like a pumpkin, and he was turning orange kind of red. He was changing color, and he was in some really bad shape. And where he had some of the cancer surgery on his neck, the scars were starting to push out, so it actually looked like stripes in the pumpkin. He was, he was bad, really bad. And the nurse is just shaking his head. He's like, we don't treat this here. And at that point, 
I, I was getting pissed. Well, Rob was pissed. I was getting really frustrated with the whole situation. We finally pushed the nurse into getting Rob looked at by a doctor. He was shaking his head the whole while. He wasn't happy with it. It's like, why am I doing this? They put him in a room. They immediately, immediately hooked him up to antibiotics. They put him on the bag right away. They also put him in an IV because he was dehydrated because he wasn't having enough intake. And they tried to help him as much as they could until we finally got a doctor to look at him. And it was a couple hours in a not busy clinic. <laughs> you can hear all the voices outside. But at least the care was handled. But when the doctor walked in, he was wide-eyed. And he was like, oh, this is not good, you know? And he realized that Rob is now in his care and is now his responsibility, and he was very careful with his words. And honestly, he did his job. He did his job. He said, I cannot in good faith um, release you to go find another dentist. He says, you are in a condition that you don't have two weeks to live. You're not going to make it. I have to find you a surgeon right now that will sign off on you and take care of you responsibly. So that way, of course, he doesn't have the liability anymore, so he's paying it off. But he, he saw how bad a shape Rob was in, and he was saying he's going to choke. You know, the infection had pushed, closed his windpipe up so much that he wasn't going to make it. And uh, I'm surprised he didn't, almost didn't end up with a trach. I mean, he was that bad, but the uh, penicillin stuff started working quickly. And within a couple hours, his face had shrunk dramatically. I mean, the size of his face changed a lot. And his skin was all loose under his neck because it was all stretched out. And it was still red, so he looked like the uh, waddles under a chicken. He had all this, this red, loose skin. And, of course, a day later, it all went away. But uh, they found him a surgeon. And then they had to wait for an ambulance to transport him to the hospital. But <laughs> he waited about six, seven hours. I'm like, I'll put him in the car and I'll drive him over there. It's only across town. They're like, no, no, we do it this way on purpose because too many people take the patients and don't show up or they go do shopping first and they don't show up on time, they mess up the schedules, um, just disappear. So I was like, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. If this is your policy, this is what you're going to do. So they got him over to the hospital. They got him stabilized where he's able to breathe better again. And then uh, the following day, they gave him surgery. And they put three holes up under here. It's actually what it was, three holes. I thought they gave him a large decision to cut them all up. But no, three holes apparently to get him with tubes and things that were like that long, way up in his face, because it got up into his sinuses and everything. But they made these holes and they went up and just drained him out. It really drained him out. It was gross because he had this, this bandage around his head, you know, for any of the leakage and stuff that was seeping out of him. And uh, he got loaded up on antibiotics and then they took out all of his teeth on the lower, well, it will be left-hand side, this side. So he's got no teeth on that side at all anymore, and now they're probably going to take out the rest of the teeth on the other side because those are also um, problematic due to the radiation that killed all the... The uppers apparently are okay, at least for now. I suppose when they went in with the radiation, it just hit the teeth just right and messed up the lowers. So anyway, he's, uh, he's going to have the rest of them out, and he's probably going to get some kind of appliance to fill in on the bottom there. He's discussing the implants. I don't know, he just happened to meet a dentist friend that needs a lot of nice carpentry around his house. So they, they got some kind of a deal worked out. There's gonna be some exchange of money somewhere. I'm sure you have to pay an anesthesiologist or something yes. like that. So there's still gonna be something that has to come out of, out of pocket. But yeah, this, this week um, I saved a life. And it would be a lie to tell you that I wasn't in tears at some point this week that I was gonna lose my best friend. And I was I'm still a little rattled just thinking about it. It bothered me. But he's still with us. He's doing well and he was released from the hospital yesterday. He was in there for almost a complete week. Um, now he's just on some antibiotics and some painkillers, but he's up moving and functional again. He says he's going to take the whole week off this week, and he's going to clean up his house, which is good, because Rob's a junk collector. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like my yard. <laughs> Rob's got um, more stuff, more stuff in a smaller space, so that, uh, that definitely is something he needs to do. He's got to get rid of a lot of things. It's, uh, he, um, East Hill, right here, of course, you know, it's all rich people live there now. It used to be, like, um more impoverished than it was and then they had a huge gentrification and now properties over there I don't think you can find one for less than half a million dollars anymore <laughs> even when I moved here you know they were like a hundred thousand dollar properties and that was high and now they're like five hundred thousand dollar properties and they're not even anything fancy to look at for most of them it's just an old house oh it's a historical district oh it is it is but uh yeah it's uh it, it went way too posh but at least for the people that have been there a long time at least now they're making some money on this other house so good for them Anyway, he lives over there in East Hill and he works in East Hill. People in East Hill have too much money. And always on the curb, he finds some great things. Great furniture, he finds appliances, he finds working TV sets. Like, newish working TV sets. 
He found camcorder equipment, recording equipment, tripods, cameras, I mean, great stuff just laying on the curb. So he collects it. He finds car parts, wheels, tires. So he's got a, a new set of tires for his truck because they were on the curb. Now you can say what you want about trash pickers, but when you're driving through a rich neighborhood, <laughs> I'm all about picking up the stuff that's good. But sometimes now he's gotten to the point where he sees a whole box full of stuff and he just takes the whole box. Rather than, you know, picking off a few things on the top or seeing something that he likes, he takes the whole box. So he's got this whole box of junk, he picks out a couple things, and then he throws it in the yard. That needs to go in the trash can, he just kind of, yeah, so. He was talking about opening up his own little thrift store, or possibly donating things to a thrift store, but he hasn't gotten that far yet. But hopefully he'll get there soon, and this week is his big cleanup because his landlady's not happy about his, his collections. It got a little too big. <laughs> just a little bit too big. <laughs> Well, that's Rob. We're going to see more of him because, of course, this is his ignition switch. And we're working on his uh, Super Beetle, which had all them wiring problems. That thing was just a complete, complete disaster. Also this week, Ruby, as you saw, had some problems with her uh, axles. That actually happened several weeks ago. That video was in the, uh, the making for quite a while. I came out the same week as Easy Jeezy, you know, uh, not local, another non-local YouTuber. He's from Colorado, I believe. Had the same problem, and exactly in the same spot. His CV joint just came off. His bolts just came undone, though. Mine broke. Oh. Mine actually broke off. Well, people here on YouTube want to say, hey, Duckman, <laughs> you're supposed to drill those out and run wire through them, so that way they're all wired together so they can't come out. And you know, I went through a million different Volkswagen manuals, and not one of them said drill out the bolts and run a wire through it. Do you know why? I don't. Because you're not supposed to. <laughs> Will it help? Oh, sure it'll help. Absolutely. Is it an improvement? Yeah. If your bolts don't do what they're supposed to do, but if you put the proper parts in, which was my mistake, I used the bolts that came with the CV joints and they were cheap China garbage. And I wish I had them on the counter here. I would show them to you. I think I showed them to you already. The, the old original German ones were much heavier than the Chinese ones. You could just feel the weight difference immediately. And it, the Chinese ones were just so brittle. I mean, I, I feel like I can almost put them in my mouth and chew them. I would the not metal. recommend that. <laughs> yeah, probably not. You'd be going through the same thing Rob is. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. The metal was so soft on those things, I, I honestly think I, I probably could, could flatten them and chew them or put ding marks in them, whereas the German ones were really hard. When I went to torque them the specification, the Chinese ones were stripping out. Also, the heads where the, the tool went into it, that would strip out. And they were brand new bolts. It's not like they were dirty or something. You know, right. you put it in there and uh, it... Uh, <laughs> but they um they wouldn't even torque the spec. I mean I'm hitting maybe 15, 20 foot 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 <laughs> 20 15 to 20 foot pounds and they would just strip out. So I had to replace a couple of them with all original bolts that I just happen to have on the right hand side, and that's probably why the right hand side axle stayed on. I, I can't determine otherwise. One went on the inside, one went on the outside, and that CV joint system stayed together. All the bolts were loose, however, except for the German ones. Yeah, so that tells you something right there. Now, on the uh, left-hand side, of course, I replaced all the German bolts, put them all back on, and I torqued them the spec. And I torqued them not to the spec of Volkswagen uh, Type 3s and Beetles, which I believe was like um, 25 foot-pounds, I think it was. But I torqued them to Bus or Porsche, which is 30 to 35 foot-pounds. They're exactly the same bolts, and they screw into exactly the same flanges. There's no reason why I couldn't withstand that. So I torqued them, and they did not strip. They tighten right on down. I also put a little bit of Loctite on them, which is not necessary per the manual, but I think they're going to be good from here on out. Unless I do something really dumb, or if somehow I screwed up something during the installation, but you guys watched the video, it didn't appear that I messed something up. <laughs> so, she's working again, the engine's not going to catch fire, and Rob's got half his teeth. Let's open up some more presents. <laughs> yeah, let's that was a hell of a story. How long did that run? Yeah, a good 18 minutes. Another one for you. Another one for me? Yeah. Nope. It's another nope. one for Rob. Rob! There you go. What is it? Door handle repair kit. Door handle repair kits. Yay! Is this for the Stupid Beetle? Yes, it's for the Stupid Beetle. The Stupid Beetle also is missing the keys to the door handles. Because when we received it, it had no keys to those either. Being rat round, they rem removed all that stuff. So it was cheaper to buy a new set of door handles with the matching keys that are ready to go. Then it was to have them rekeyed once again. I think these things cost about 30 bucks. And CIP1 comes through once again. These things are um, not exactly show quality, but you know what? For what they are, it's not that hard to pull the mechanism out and put them into the actual stock handles if I wanted to go that route. I mean, it's all the same stuff, right? 
The keys are obviously not original, they're plastic uh, China keys, but this is something that is serviceable and will secure the Beetle, well, as best as you could possibly secure a Volkswagen, because you can always use a jimmy stick and unlock the door if you really das wanted parts. to. Das Parts. Das Parts, yeah? Das Parts. Das Stuck. Where does it say Das Parts? It doesn't. Okay, there it is. Das Parts. I believe Stuck is what they would normally say for a part. Oh, it says it there too. I was looking at the black print. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's put this back together. I want to scratch up the chrome on here. Shut up, Biddy. Biddy, you ruined all the damn videos. I should have left you inside. I got something to say today. I don't know why Biddy's so vocal today. You know, Biddy was covered last night. Biddy was screaming last night in the middle of the night. I threw a blanket over and turned the lights out and let it work? Yeah, he was quiet. He was quiet. And then this morning, uh, Tezzy was making noise instead. Tessie was not covered. And Tessie usually doesn't speak too much. And you probably knows you haven't heard Tessie on video yet. But you did hear Tessie for the first time. Yeah. And the cock and doodle do sounds more like a, a diesel truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's real throaty and deep. We got one more something. Put it in. Put it in. Installation kit for the muffler. Oh, it's your muff nuts. Muff nuts. <laughs> muff nuts. Actually, what it is, though. <laughs> it's all a little. That was Tezzy. That was Tezzy. Finally on video, we got Tezzy for the first time. <laughs> but there's her, her nuts for her muff, there's her gasket seals, and everything that we need for the J2. Simultaneous. So, in stereo. Here's the clamps to hold the J tubes on. I mean, everything you need in, this, in here to uh, mount an exhaust kit. So, that might just happen today while we're doing some recording and end up in the next video. Tessie, you're noisy too. Not as piercing though, that's what I like about that one. When you're inside the house, you don't hear it. Where's Biddy? That's shrill, you hear that. Mm -hmm. Tessie doesn't bother nobody. Hey, Tessie! Woo! <laughs> that's right, you heard it first. Well, that's it for our stuff today, isn't it? That is. Anything else you'd like to share since I did all my babbling today? No. No? Biddy had something. Ooh, boomer. Bucket, where'd you go, Boomer? Oh, he's just chilling. He's not in harm's way because Biddy beat him up a couple weeks ago. He'll be alright. Alright, well that's it for today. Please licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck those dingle bellies that way you get updates every time I post a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. You can find bees up there just the same. You can also find links to, uh, well, you know, Rob doesn't have any stuff yet, but he's going to have some stuff. He's going to have a YouTube channel, he's going to do his own thing. We're going to push the Jeep stuff on his YouTube when it comes time. You'll probably see them over on mine first, and then I'll pass the baton over to him when it comes time. But uh, that's part of what he's doing this week. He's cleaning up so we can even get to the Jeeps. Because he bought two Jeeps over the last few years, and they're kind of sitting in the yard uh, just behind stuff. Where he can't yeah, get so that, yeah, where nobody can get to them, which is good. I guess nobody can steal them. <laughs> even code enforcement won't take them. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought works. about that. You bury shit the code enforcement can't get to. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.